Hey, what is up guys? It's TJ here coming to you live from the beautiful Bay Area, California. So, look at all that streamception going on here. Um, so, what I'm gonna... You guys, are, that's gonna trip you out up. Okay, so... Basically, what I'm gonna be going over... Hi, Leia. Um, a lot of people have asked me what I do... What my OBS settings are. Um, you know, as you can see at the bottom here, right next to me... Right, right there. I don't even know where my hand is in relation. Right there. That's my bitrate. Um, that's what I stream at. Generally in that area. Um, I'm going to go through my settings. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Twitch quality. Um, things you can use. Things you can do to help you out. Um, I'm going off the, you know, off the seat of my pants here, so I'm kind of making things up as I go. But um, I've been asked a lot about my settings. I've been asked a lot about how Twitch works in general, and I just wanted to partake the knowledge that I've gained through research and doing my own, you know, kind of thing. And I wanted to help help you. Um, the one thing that I want to be 100% uh, clear on when we're talking about streaming to the internet um a lot of people are like oh that bit rate you know you're, the higher the bit rate the better quality your stream is going to be and it's going to look so good it's going to look like a pro stream and and uh you know that's all you need that's you just need that if you can you have to have the internet to do that high bit rate and while i agree you need to have decent upload um you have to remember that for everything that you push out the people watching on Twitch have to be able to pull in. Now, I have 12 upload. Um, I get about 12 megabits per second upload, and that's plenty for HD. I could do 1080 if I wanted to and run it at, you know, 2800 bit rate uh, or 3000 bit rate, 3500 bit rate, which is the maximum Twitch says you should do. Um, but I don't. I don't do that uh, for very specific reasons. Um, as a, a smaller stream, as a smaller streamer, I don't get the, the benefits of having the downscaling for my viewers, which means that the higher my bitrate goes, the m more likely it is that people can't watch my stream because they can't download that fast. Um, with the settings I have now that I'm going to show you guys, I'm able to... I'm able to actually um, have my Australian viewers watch without any issues and I'm all the way I'm in California so I'm gonna go through my settings really fast uh, sorry for the streamception here but it's kind of a necessary evil when showing OBS and using OBS to record so let's go ahead and go into settings okay so we have our settings here General is just general. You're going to have your, your setting presets. I have a couple. I have one for local recording, which I'm not even bothering using. This is the setting I'm use, I am use for streaming. So this quality is what you're going to see on my stream and, and vice versa. Um, so encoding. This is when we start getting into the nitty gritty a little bit. Um, so you always want to use CBR uh, and, and enable CBR padding. Um, so CBR is constant bitrate. For those of you that don't know, um, CBR is basically almost pushed on you now by Twitch. They kind of say, hey, if you're going to stream, you got to do CBR. Oh, that was not my pants. That was my keys. I was taking them off my belt. I just got home from work, and I'm kind of doing this off the seat of my pants. So um, constant bit rate, very important. They almost pretty much yell at you if you don't use it. Um, I use my encoder on my processor. I don't use NVIDIA v. v NEC or whatever the hell it's called. That's crappy. It's garbage. Um, now, I use 128 bitrate for my stereo because it's not that much of a bandwidth tack on and I feel like you can with my with my audio setup, I feel like I might as well get a little more of that quality out of it. Um, how you sound is almost important, if not more important than how your game looks. Um, in my opinion. So I have my audio bitrate a little bit up. Codec's pretty standard. I think that's default. Um, I have my max bitrate at 2000. 
So my maximum bit rate and my buffer is at 2000, um, which is not low, but it's not high. Um, so when we're talking bit rates, the higher the bit rate um, in parallel to the resolution you choose, that is better quality, right? So say that you have 1080p, you almost need a 3000 bit rate for that quality to be there. Um, you know, 720p, you can drop it down a little bit to keep your quality. You won't need as much bandwidth because it's not as much resolution. With me, you'll see that my resolution is not even 720 and I'll show, I'll, I'll show you why. Um, I don't even do 720. So I'm able to get away with a 2000 bit rate with a good looking stream. I've never had any complaints on how my stream looks. Um, it's not the not pro stream. It's not the best stream, but it looks really good. And nobody ever has any issues with my stream except for one guy. But he's like, he still comes around because he listens to my my uh, stream as like an audio podcast, and I love him for it. But he um. He's the only person that I ever have any problems with. Um, okay, so let's go to broadcast settings. So this is pretty standard. You pick your server that you're closest to. I bounce between San Francisco and LA. Uh, San Francisco has a lot of traffic coming through it, and and so it's kind of hit and miss. Um, so sometimes I use LA, sometimes I use San Francisco, and it's kind of LA is a less bottlenecked hub, right? And it's still close to me, so I still get really good ping to it. And people watching, because Twitch doesn't go server to server. Twitch doesn't pass your info from one server to another, right? So whatever server you decide to stream to, that's the server that everyone's going to watch your stream from. So San Francisco, I kind of avoid because the pipes are so clogged for incoming traffic that a lot of people, I've, I always get issues with people watching my stream if I stream to San Francisco servers. So I stream to LA. Um, everything else is pretty standard. Uh, I have mine set up to record locally or stream or both if I want to. So yeah. Video, here we go. So I have my base resolution set to 1920 by 1080. Um, but I downscaled two times to 960 by 540 and I use the best detail filter at 30 frames a second and I disable arrow. Um, so since I downscale so far, I'm able to use less bitrate and keep my quality. The reason, so my mind, my, my thinking, my process behind why did I lower my resolution so much is, so let me, let me for a second um, pull up my Twitch stream. So let me pull up my my site here. It says I'm offline. No way. Okay. Heh, it even shows my highlights now. That's adorable. That's new. Um so this is my stream, right? You can see that I have my offline and my chat, and this is a 1920 by 1080 monitor, 22 inch. Most people I would say are, are watching your stream on something like this. Now, if you go 1920 by 1080 on your stream, that means at full screen, they're watching what you're seeing, basically. And you're requiring a lot of bandwidth for them to do it. Now, at 720, you're probably talking about this size box. Um, and at my resolution, you're probably talking a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe this size box for my resolution, maybe a little bit bigger for, um, 720p. But, so, I don't know very many people that full screen a stream. Um, normally, most people would do this and have chat open so they can interact, or they'll do this new, um, theater mode which still is not 720p if you take if you take or still isn't 1920 by 1080 if you take your hotbar and your browser bar out of it if you f11 it that's much closer to 720p for just the stream itself so nobody nobody's actually watching your stream at 1920 by 1080 i know you hope hope they are but they're not regardless of if you're streaming at 1920 by 1080 um, or 720 even really, um, they're not watching it at that. And 
if you're thinking of yourself as a stream that you want to open yourself up for, you want to open your stream up to more people, the masses, it's a, it's more important to, to think about the bandwidth that you're making them download every second than necessarily the crispness of your edges. And that was a very hard hard thing for me to accept. But since I have, I've gotten a lot better response. People are... Uh, enjoying my stream a lot more they're able to feel like they can find they found a stream that they can watch and they're not partnered and it's amazing because i don't have that downscale and they can still watch my stream which is a rare rare thing um so i guess we can move on i think everything's pretty much the same my mic is the same default crap advanced i'm pretty sure i'm using fast for my preset, main for my encoding profile, scene buffer in milliseconds 400. I'm pretty sure most of this is default. One thing that I do recommend though, is if you have a mic that might be noisy, or um, you may have a loud house, um, one thing that's going to kill it for, kill your stream for people right out of the gate is if your mic drives them crazy. And that's why I mean, that's what I mean by it's important to audio is almost more important than your game right because you're the entertainer your game is just like a, a capsule of like how you're mediating your entertainment um it's kind of like you're on the fly inspiration i'm gonna make a joke about this thing i did in the game but if you aren't heard or you're not if you're annoying um then you're not going to get your point across and that's bad um no one's gonna you're they're gonna come in for two seconds and be like oh what the what the hell and they're gonna flip out and they're gonna leave um so i recommend definitely using the built-in noise gate so this is my noise gate um right now i think my microphone's a little bit boosted so this is probably going to be a bad a poor example of the noise gate but this is the settings that i'm usually at um if i actually go into my recording settings go into my microphone bring this down to 10 where it's supposed to be this is an example of how the noise gate works if you look at my bar when I'm silent it will go away at least it should go away oh uh, well it probably won't change the settings but if you look at here so this is your closed threshold this is your open threshold if the bar green bars below this your mic silences completely if it goes above this one it opens so it's that's important um this kind of stuff you don't really need this is your enable make sure that's checked um but yeah that's pretty much all the settings that i can go over that i can think about um, as far as scene switching is concerned, I don't really have any extra scenes set up. Uh, I do recommend setting up global sources. Uh, if you're lazy, you can add games, but it's cool to do global sources, excuse me, because um, you can keep that you can keep down here a lot cleaner. You can remove things and then say, oh, well, I have that game in my global source. I can just go at it um, without having to dig through, you know. So that's kind of cool. Um, hmm what else my pets are all hyper right now because i just got home from work um that's all i can really think of um applications that can help you so if you have a computer that's pretty decent i recommend using chatty i'll go ahead and open mine right now um so this is what chatty looks like for me anyways now i'm blind i'm blind as hell right I have the biggest font that I could find, biggest and cleanest font that I can find, and um, and I use that on my other monitor. It's important, in my opinion, to have two monitors for streaming. Absolutely important. Uh, you need to be able to interact with your audience. Or, I mean, if you're not going to have a second monitor, have like an iPad up with your chat. Have whatever you got, your phone, something. Because you need to interact with your with your viewers. If someone comes in and you're not talking to them, they're just going to leave. Um, so this is how I generally 
That's how I generally read my chat. <laughs> I read it through this program. I rarely have browser open because I take, it's just a needed resource. Um, this is a little heavy because it is a Java program. Um, Chatty is not the lightest program in the world, but it does the job. Um, as far as anything else, I use Twitch alerts for my alerts um, and all my kind of tech stuff. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. If uh, I have people asking me how to set up Twitch alerts, I'll, I'll make a video on that, but... That's pretty simple. Chatty's pretty simple. Just download it, punch in your information, and you're good to go. Authenticate a token. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So this was just going to be a short video. I'm going to throw this up on my YouTube channel and advertise it for people that, that are looking for information. Um, you know, if you guys want me to do more more videos like this, green screen video or... or um, you know, anything else that you can think of that I do, let me know. And uh, I'll definitely look into making something real quick and, and helping you guys out, hopefully. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like the video. Comment on it if you liked it. Um, if you disliked it, dislike it and throw a comment on there letting me know why you disliked it. And, um, yeah, hopefully I helped. And hopefully there was a nugget of information in there that you didn't think about before. Um, and, yeah, now you have it. So... Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.